So what, what is your opinion or what do you think about the proposed introduction of a directly elected mayor for Limerick? And maybe what should the role and the term of office be? Sure. Well, I can speak to what we have here in the city of Spokane. Uh, I am a strong mayor in a uh, strong mayor form of government, elected citywide, 225,000 uh, people. And um, this has been our form of government for just a little more than 20 years. It was a change to the city manager form of government that we had had previously. And it was, uh, the change was required by uh, a voter initiative. So, so the people of Spokane got to vote on this. And I think it's been successful as a strong mayor. It is my job to represent all of those in our city, those who voted for me and didn't vote for me. So I'm very aware of that. It is a nonpartisan position. So even though we have several political parties, Republican, Democrat, Independent, um, this is a nonpartisan position. So when I ran in 2019, for this position, I did not declare a party because it doesn't matter if you're a Republican or a Democrat, the snow has to be removed from the streets, the garbage has to be picked up. And I wanted to um, remove partisanship uh, away from this position. So my role really is to represent the city in many different ways. My initiatives are homelessness, housing, um, economic development and of course public safety. Public safety is the fundamental responsibility of, of government. So I spend a lot of time on that. But really too, to be the ambassador of our city and to represent our city on many different platforms. So it's a great position to be in. Great, thank you very much mm -hmm. indeed for that. And what powers and functions should be assigned to the office? Well, we are, uh, I am the executive branch and our city council is the legislative branch. So I am the CEO, basically the chief executive officer of the city. I am in charge of operations. We have 20, about 2,300 employees, a $1.4 billion budget. So I um, create the budget. Um, I'm in charge of operations and our city council at the legislative arm is in charge of um, creating policy and they are the budgetary arm as well. And I, I also am in a position where I can create policy as well. But when our city council creates policy by passing ordinances, it is my job to implement those policies passed by them. Very good. Thank you very mm -hmm. much indeed for that. And um, what are the advantages to a directly elected mayor and possibly what are the disadvantages? Well, as a strong mayor, um, you know, I get to make the decisions and I'm not a ceremonial mayor like a lot of cities have where, um, you know, they don't, they're not in charge of hiring. I do the hiring of all the executive and leadership positions here at the city and I am in charge of creating the budget. Um, if you're a ceremonial mayor, most likely your city manager will be taking on those functions. But that is something that, um, that I am in charge of. And so uh, I also get to represent the city in, in many different ways on boards and on commissions and um, am very vocal in the community. So uh, being a strong mayor, I think, is much more desirable for somebody in my position than if I were a ceremonial mayor. <clears throat> very good. Thank you very much, indeed. And, and um, in your opinion, um, what I suppose should be in the legislation, maybe in terms of, you know, the reporting lines, who should the mayor be responsible to, the financial supports, and maybe in terms of admin staff, and who should the mayor answer to? So just, I suppose, from your own experience, looking at those areas. Well, I think there are some members of our council, of our city council, that see their role as oversight of me. Um, I, we are separate branches of government. So myself as CEO, I do have a cabinet of about 14 members and um, they're, they're my leadership team. So we work together on many of the initiatives that I had mentioned, housing, homelessness, public safety and economic development. We're also adding mental health um, this year coming out of the pandemic. I think our collective mental health in the community has been impacted greatly by shutdowns and isolations and just two years of living through and a historic time, unprecedented time of this global health pandemic. Um, but as far as oversight, um, that's the voters. 
The voters who elected me are the ones who oversee how I do my job. And if I'm not doing my job well, then um, I will not get reelected. By the way, we have term limits uh, here at the city. So I, um, if I'm fortunate enough, will be uh, reelected next year when I run again. And those term limits are two four-year terms. So I will be able to serve a total of eight years uh, if I'm reelected next year. Very good. Thank you very much indeed. Mm -hmm. And I suppose in terms of, um, is it okay if I ask you how you communicate your message to yes. your to your voters and to the and to the city of Spokane? Absolutely, that's a great question. I come from the world of communications. Before I ran for mayor in 2019, I was a broadcast journalist and delivered the evening news for 28 years in Spokane, 35 total in my career. So um, communication was something that's uh, fairly easy for me, although being on the other end of the camera is much different than when you're the journalist, right? But um, I put out videos every week. During the pandemic, they were almost daily to communicate to the viewers. Um, I'm also, I have uh, weekly check-ins with local radio stations, with the local newspaper. Um, we put out a, a weekly newsletter to the community that has 95,000 subscribers. So there is a robust um, communication that happens between this office and the community. Great. And just in terms of, um, I know you referred to the fact that you are the CEO in Ireland, or going to the mayor, and we're still going to have the position of CEO, and we're going to have the council. Hmm. So just what do you think the working relationship should be like between, I suppose, <coughs> the mayor and, and both the CEO and the council? That's a great question. So I do have a city administrator who is my COO and he is in charge of the internal operations. And so he meets um, weekly with our cabinet members just to make sure that every division, and we have more than a dozen, are operating uh, efficiently and functioning well. My relationship with council when I came into office, I wanted to make sure that I developed uh, close relationships because politically, our council isn't necessarily aligned with my, my philosophical uh, or my political ideology. So we have a, a, a difference in political philosophy. So I knew that there were going to be disagreements and not everything that we would agree on. So I thought it was very important to establish relationships with our council president. So our council is seven members, six of them, two in each district, are elected by district, but we have a council president who oversees the council who's elected citywide as I am. So I meet with our council president once a week, and then I meet individually with the other six council members once a month. And I wanted to create that relationship so that we could build trust, so that when we do have difficult decisions or conversations to have, that trust would be there so that we could have those conversations. But we have been able to lean in on the common ground and um, get things done that way. I believe that um, compromise is not a dirty word. We, we compromise, I get more through compromise than I do than drawing a line in the sand and, and staying, on, staying there. So uh, I listen a lot and relationship building is extremely important. We do operate under two uh, premises and that is um, we don't blindside each other. We have a line of communication, so we tell each other what we're going to do, especially if it's something that I know they're not gonna be happy with or they're not gonna be ha that they know I'm not gonna be happy with. And we don't disparage one another in public because if we have disagreements, we're not going to tear each other down personally in the media um, because of it. Okay, uh, just to know, um, <coughs> you mentioned uh, during your one of your answers there about economic development. Um, so do you draw up the budget or is it the council draws up the budget? I'm just interested in Yes, that. so I, oh, I, I draw up the budget. Uh, and again, it's a, it's a billion dollar plus budget. So it's quite large. And then the council approves it. And there are many, many months of the administration, myself working with the council uh, to get that approved. And there's negotiations that happened, um, sometimes uh, not publicly, but also publicly. So that is a process that takes many, many months. And we will start that process for 2023, probably uh, in the next month or so. 
Okay, no, that's great. Thank you very much. Mm-hmm. And I suppose finally for um, just really, I suppose, if there's something that you think maybe you'd like to add from your experience in terms of being a directly elected mayor to give us advice to Limerick that are facing into the whole concept of a directly elected mayor. Well, I, I'll tell you what, be out in the community as much as you can as, as a directly elected mayor. Your constituents voted for you. They want to see you in all the spaces. They want you to show up at events and they want you to be there in the uncomfortable spaces as well. So again, you represent those, not just who voted for you, but those who did not vote for you and you cannot leave them out of that community engagement. You need to show up in their spaces as well. And that's not always an easy thing to do when you're facing a room of people who don't agree with the things that you're doing. But you need to show up and be able to engage with the community. I think that's one of the most important things as a directly elected mayor um, is to show up where your constituents are and be able to communicate and articulate what you are doing for them. No, that's great. Thank you very, thank you very much. I really appreciate the fact that you know you you've given so much time and thought to this because certainly you know in terms of Limerick it is an exciting time. I think the fact that we're going to be the first city and county in Ireland to have a directly elected mayor, you know, is something that the rest I I, I believe the rest of the country will be jealous of us. <laughs> so I am forward. looking forward to meeting. Uh, everyone there and visiting. I've never been to Ireland. So uh, I'm hoping that within my first term, we can do that or my second term, uh, looking forward to that. And you will be a model. I mean, if this works for, for Limerick, I think Limerick will be a model to many other cities in the country of Ireland. So that's a very exciting thing, position for Limerick to be in. Very good. And, and I have met um, some of your former colleagues and some of your councillors and some of you because there's a very active uh, Spokane Limerick uh, yes. committee. So I've met uh, Kerry and part of the group oh. over many years down on their many visits. So certainly, uh, and Maureen Peters as well yes. uh, was very involved in it. Yes. So certainly looking forward to welcoming you to Limerick, certainly. And hopefully by the time you come, we will have our first directly elected mayor in place. And, Certainly, um, you know, I know we're looking at a term of maybe five years mm. and, and like that, that somebody could go for a second term, but that would be it, Max. So yeah. wishing you all the very best um, Thank you. with those endeavours, certainly. Thank you. It's just a pleasure to meet you and talk with you and share our experience with you. Thank you so much. No, not at all. And thank you so much okay. for your time and and to, uh, to Sarah and your office as well for organizing. Okay. So thank you so much. And enjoy the rest of your day. Thank you. You too, Maria. Take care. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thank you. Well, that was great.